Hey, as of recording this, we are 24 hours away from us menu. We won't be by the time you're watching this. Uh, it'll probably be WrestleMania Day, April 1st. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't agree with the sentiments that a lot of people have had about, you know, WrestleMania is a concept. WrestleMania in general. I really hate the the stereotype that WrestleMania now falls into that each match has to range from good to great to brilliant, whatever. Out of this stratosphere, whatever. And you know, it's it's annoying because WrestleMania has never been that. Never, you know. It's very rare that a WrestleMania has more than one, two really good matches. And it's just gotten to be, um, we've just become, as wrestling fans, we've, we expect a higher sort of, um, higher level of product from, from the, the people that are producing the show, which maybe we shouldn't do, you know, because... I mean, that's not what the show's been in the past, so why should it just suddenly change now? I don't think that's necessarily fair on WrestleMania as a concept. Um, and I don't think it's fair that we expect more and more and more each year round. You know, looking back a year ago, if I if I had a, a time machine and, and um, you could go, I could go back and tell them that um, myself a year ago that the four main events for this year's Wrestlemania would be CM Punk and uh, Jericho Rock and Cena uh, Taker and, and uh, Triple H in Hell and Cell and Sheamus vs Daniel Bryan for the world title I would have taken that and I would have said that's a Wrestlemania that could do well that could do very well you know a year ago when the Rock Cena match was originally announced I honestly thought they were going to break the record Right now, I don't. No, not at all. Because the build has just been shit. That doesn't mean I'm not interested in the match. I'm not interested in the match because of the build. I'm interested in the match because it's Rock and Cena. It's Rock and Cena. It's the guy that I grew up watching against John Cena, who's the guy that I've grown to... I don't know. I don't know how to word it. Because I don't hate Cena. I don't love him. And you know, I I I um I'm not one of those who think Cena needs to turn heel, although it would definitely be helpful. It would be something. It would be better than what we've currently got. But he doesn't need to turn heel. He just needs a change of change to his character, a big change to his character. He doesn't have to become a heel. I mean he just doesn't he just needs to stop being the the character he is right now. But anyway, um, we'll get into the main event later. I'm going to start off with... Where should I start? You know, because looking at this card, there are some matches I really don't care about, and then there are some matches I do. One of the matches I don't care about... Let's start with the matches I don't care about. Let's go from don't care to do care. And we'll start with the Divas Tag Team match, which is just there for the sake of it, really. You know, they've got to put the Divas on, they've got to have their celebrity come on the show to make it entertainment mania. <sighs> Don't care. Beth is fine. Eve is fine. Don't like Kelly. If Maria is supposedly as good as they say she is, I haven't really seen anything. But she's actually been working. She's trying to wrestle. So she's going to be better than Snooki. Which is I'm not saying much. But if she's actually going to put forth effort. Then I'm okay with it. It's not going to be a long match. So thank God. They'll just get them on. Let them do their stuff. Get them off. Simple. But yeah. Don't care for that match. Um, 
Orton versus Kane. Don't care. Don't care. Don't really care about Randy Orton. He's a character. He's a decent worker. Um, I didn't like Orton. I didn't. But, you know, he is... <laughs> He improved so much last year. It's unbelievable. It's un it is scary how working with somebody as good as Christian, how much that that did for him. Working with Christian did so much for him, so much, and he really benefited from being in the ring with Christian. I mean, you, people complain that that feud just went on and on and on, and they have way too many matches. I have no problem with Randy Orton having good matches. I have no problem with it at all. I have no problem with Christian being the world title thing. I have no problem with that at all. I have no problem with I had no problem with that feud at all. Like throughout the whole of um, what was it, spring summer, I had no problem with any of that feud. And I, um, I, if anything, I wanted it to carry on longer. All that I think the SummerSlam match and the way it ended and everything was fine, but you know. Randy Orton was taught to be a good worker by Christian. And like, Randy Orton is really kidding himself, isn't he? Uh, are my matches bigger than the world title match? <laughs> Excuse me while I throw up in a bucket. Bite me, Randy Orton. A match with Kane is worth about as much as... A free condom. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't care. Uh, what do I care about? Team Laurinaitis versus uh, Team Team Long. I kind of care about this because some of the people involved I like. Ziggler Mark. Uh, I like Jack Swagger. Might get jumped on for that, but you know I, they booked him stupidly. Um, would like them to do more with Drew because he's not horrible. But I'm not a Drew Mark. Um, who, who else is in this match? No, I don't think there's anybody on uh, Teddy Long's team that I care about. I've stopped caring about the Miz. Stop caring. I never cared for Mark Henry. Just reckless, reckless. Um, Otunga. Otunga is entertaining as an on-air personality, but he's so bad as a wrestler. Don't like Santina. Kingston, I've sort of just, uh, our truth don't care for. Booker T should not be in the ring. Great Carly is horrible. And their sixth member is Zack Ryder, who I could not give two fucks for. The most most interested I was in this match was the the Oksana Vicky Guerrero cowboy. <laughs> was the most interested I've ever been in this match, which is ridiculous, really. But um, I think, like, if you have Ziggler, like, there are some decent workers in this match. I mean, even if I don't care about Kingston and r -Truth, they can work. Um, Booker T can work. Keep Carly out of the ring. Maybe let him have, a, like, a chop spot, and then Mark Henry comes in and just, like, hits him with the world's strongest slam, whatever. Um, but, yeah, just don't care about this match. Expect Larry Knight's nice win, but... And just don't care for the match. Would rather see um, Dolph Ziggler have a big singles match, which I feel like he needed this WrestleMania. Unfortunately, he's not getting it, but at least he's on the card, which is better than nothing. But he's just so good, and they're just booking him so poorly, which is a shame. So, but um, yeah. Please let Ziggler get the winning winning fall, because at least that would be something. Um. Cody Rhodes and the Big Show. The build has been good. The build has been pretty good. But Rhodes is like Ziggler. He needed a big singles match. And Big Show, while being big in a literal sense, it's not big in the sense 
So it, it's not it's not got big match feel. Cody Rhodes versus Big Show. Yeah, it's a non big four pay per view match. It's not a WrestleMania match. You know, I just Cody Cody's better than this. He's much better than this. And the worst thing is the way that it's been booked. Big Show's got oh, got to win. I mean, I uh, part of me saying that they're going to do the smart thing and they're going to do a DQ or a count out finish where Big Show will like he'll hit he'll he'll hit the the, the WMD and and then Cody will roll out of the ring and get counted out and Big Show will finally have his WrestleMania win. But part of me is thinking they're going to come in, they're going to have their entrances, and. Um, Cody's gonna charge at Big Show, and Big Show's just gonna punch him in the face, and that's gonna be it. And it's literally, it's gonna be a literal, it's gonna be a squash. That's that. The, I'm, I'm leaning towards that, and then it, and the, the Big Show's gonna squash him, get the Intercontinental Title, and then Cody's gonna be buried there and then. I really hope not, but it's been a decent build, though. and it, it's something. It's actually something that I'm, I'm more interested in than if um, the build hadn't been good. Let's put it that way. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus, more so for it as a match um, than as as the build has been, because the build hasn't been great. But I just think these two are going to go out there if they're given the time, given fifteen minutes plus, they will go out there and they'll have a great match because they're both very good workers. Sheamus has improved as well, much like Orton. He's come along a lot in in the past year or so. And uh, a match against Daniel Bryan, who <laughs> who could work with anybody. He could work with a mop. You know, he's undoubtedly one of the the best wrestlers in the world. Um, Taker versus uh, Triple H in the Hell Cell. It's not something I wanted to see. Not all. I had a feeling that they were going to do something to spark it, up, spruce it up. Um, I remember when I was watching a promo live, um, and Triple H turned back and he was going to accept the mat. He when he turned, literally when he when he started pulling off his tie, I I could I I said that it's going to be Hell in a Cell. He's gonna he's gonna say Hell in a Cell. I'll fight, fight you in Hell's Cell. It's something different, but I just didn't want to see this match again. They had the best match they could in 2001. And the 2011 version of the match was just a horrible, horrible spot fest, which I don't want to see two old men just beating each other up with steel chairs and finishing the news and just no selling the shit out of everything oh my god and I don't care what Brian Alvarez says or Dave Meltzer or whatever fucking wrestling journalist you want to find no that tombstone pile no no any wrestling fan who bought that that tombstone pile drive was going to end the Undertaker's streak is a fucking mark are you a fucking mark? Did you buy that? Are you a fucking mark? Because I didn't fucking buy it. I didn't buy it for one second. I didn't even bat an eyelid. I, since, since I started making note of it, I never thought the streak was going to end. There have been moments where I popped, where there were cool spots. Uh, the Randy Orton RKO, uh, WrestleMania 21 comes to mind. Where Undertaker took him up for a choke, so I counted it into an Arkea. That was a spot that I popped for because it was a good spot. But I've never gone and thought, oh my god, the streak's over, the streak's over, the streak's over. Because it's not. No, they're not gonna. They're not gonna kill it. No, I don't think they're ever gonna get rid of it. I don't think the streak's ever gonna die. I think he'll go to WrestleMania 30 and it will be 22 and 0 and out. I think that's that's pretty much how it's gonna go. Um, 
I would like to think this would be his last WrestleMania because I just I think 20 is a good number to finish on and I don't really have the desire to see that man put himself through more than he did at WrestleMania 27 because he just no he he I don't need to see Undertaker like that again that's not why that's not how I want to remember the Undertaker and I'm sure that's not how many wrestling fans want to remember the Undertaker and or his career He's the Undertaker. You don't want to remember him being carried out, wheeled out on the back of an ambulance. Or just bad memories. You don't want. You don't want that. So I want him to walk out of of Hell in a Cell with his arm raised, triumphant over Triple H, and just walk off into the sunset and don't come back. And that's no offense to Undertaker. Because I don't have a problem with Undertaker, and he's already he's 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 done so much for the business. And if it wasn't for him, WrestleMania would not be as big as it is today. You know, there's an Undertaker, there's Hulk Hogan, and there um, there are the, there there's uh, the Rock, the guys that really made WrestleMania. Ah, maybe not so much the Rock. But Hogan and Taker, they, they are the reason that wrestling is as big as it is today. That WrestleMania is as big as it is today. So. And I hate Triple H, so. But the promos they did to build this match has actually got me interested in it. But I really don't want to see it before. I think it'll be okay. And the, the, the dynamic of having the Cell and having Sean is new and it's different. So I'm more open to it now than I was before. Rock vs. Cena. They really done as as good a job as they possibly could of killing my interest in them. This really just like killing it, killing it, killing it. The um, the moment I felt like should have been the final thing you saw, the final moment to build to this match was when Rock said, "Cut, cut it all away, cut away the gimmicks, the whatever." Cut it all the way that he's a six foot two, two hundred and sixty pound man and at WrestleMania he's gonna kick John Cena's ass. That just neat like cause he seriously he looked like he was about to fucking explode. And you just have them just do the stare down and like just like have the shot with the WrestleMania logo in the back like just you close close in on the rock and then you sh- you zoom out and then you've got the WrestleMania logo in the background. That would have been perfect. That would be absolutely perfect. But no, they had to go on and on and on and on. It's just a shame because this could have been the biggest match. This could have been the biggest match of all time. But it's petered out to be a, a match that will be looked at as could have been greater but it will still be one of the um, one of the most um, memorable Wrestlemania matches of all time be it for good reasons or for bad reasons because you know as the match as a match itself will it be a classic don't think so it will be memorable though. Um, hopefully for the right reasons as opposed to the wrong reasons um, and then we have my my uh, my main event um, the WWE title match the, the match I'm most looking forward to and it's simply because it's Jericho and Punk um, I'm getting less and less interested in Punk like my interest in Punk peaked Money in the Bank and it's sort of gone downhill ever since it's really hard to to keep the sort of hype on the back of a performer if you um, if you build a story around him leaving and then he comes back straight away and I mean if you build that sort of hype around a, a superstar and then you have you have him it's hard enough if you build a superstar to that level to keep it going but if you build a superstar to that level, have him leave where you can you can have him go, stay away, and then when he comes back, he's gonna still be at that same level. So you've got you can sort of drag it out. 
and then maybe go even further. But just the way they booked him off the money line was ridiculous, and they killed all of his women. And he should have he should have won the title of money in the bank, and he should have kept it all the way into WrestleMania. Um, I feel like he should have won the title of money in the bank. He should have stayed away. Um, maybe cropped up every now and then, but not as a competitor. Maybe a fan. He comes to a show, or he sends in a video that somehow gets into the somebody somebody's helping him get his his uh, message across. This and that, or maybe he even buys an ad. Maybe he buys a commercial. Just you know, just be alternative. Keep him. Don't let that you don't let it be go for long enough that they don't they become disinterested in him. But you know, they did what they did and um you know this match would have been a lot a lot more interesting if Jericho had won the Rumble because Jericho hadn't won the Rumble and it was it, it's something that could actually uh, it would help boost Jericho to the point where he would probably be on the same sort of level as Punk because Punk has been the number one guy barring Cena in the company for the past year. Since Money in the Bank, he's been there. He's been there. Cena's been there. But Punk has been, like, right there next to him. And if you'd, um... If you'd actually kept... Um... If you'd actually, um... Put Jericho in and had him win the Royal Rumble, you would have added credibility back to the Royal Rumble because... Jericho was would was a, is is a superstar, and him coming back to win the Royal Rumble would be humongous. Um, it would have been huge, and him then challenging Punk for the title that would have been big as well. Um, you just build it from there. But no, they had to have the swerve, and then they have Jericho win the stupid battle royal. Like, no, he comes into the elimination chamber, and then he's eliminated and, and by a, banging his head on a camera, and then you've got the the battle royal, and then you've got the the I'm the best in the world. No, I'm the best. No, I'm the best in the world. And at that moment, you should have Daniel Bryan come down and shout, "Yes!" Yes! 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 Just for no reason. I mean, come on. <laughs> Would have been classic. Regardless. The build has been good because I feel like. I know, they, they, you can't stay with that first in the world thing. And you just can't. I mean. Back and I'm the best in the world. No, I'm the best. You can't do it. You can't keep that going for a month. You can't. You just can't. So you had to bring something new into it. So the idea that Jericho's digging up the dirt about CM Punk, CM Punk's family and his past and stuff like this, is good because Jericho's not there and he's still being a heel. And it's even more heelish that he he's saying these things and he's not there, so Punk can't confront him about it, and or he can't get payback. He can't attack Jericho or anything like that. So Jericho doing the heelish thing of a staying away, and then b doing these heelish things like saying, you know, oh your dad's a drunk or your sister's a druggie or you're a bastard because your parents weren't married. And then you've got the added thing of. He's trying to get under Punk's skin, well, but, and while Punk's reaction to it has been a little bit overkill with the Christian thing, but I mean they had to put Christian in that election. I mean, still, I just think that was overkill. Um, it's good because it's different. Nobody's gone under Punk's skin before. And I like that dynamic of that, and I like that dynamic of this feud in general, is that Jericho is going out of his way to try and get to Punk. 
and um, it's kind of working. But I, I think you need to make it more subtle. You needed to make it more subtle, and then you, you could slowly build it throughout the actual match itself to the point where if you're going to put Jericho over then you do it where Punk gets angry like you build and Punk's like shouting at him like you're going to say things about my dad now you're going to say things about my sister now you're going to say things about my mum now and then like he, he starts like like beating the crap out of him and then he make, he goes for something and then he, he, he gets angry and then he goes for something and then he makes the mistake and Jericho avoids it like a big high kick or something and then hits him with a code breaker and then Punk's gone out whereas he let his anger get the better of him like Jericho got under his skin and Punk Punk made the mistake and cost him so yeah um and that's my feeling on WrestleMania 20... 28. I almost said 27. Um, the show as a whole is a good, good looking show. I mean, the card as a whole is definitely better than your average pay per view. And there are some very, very good matches on there. The way the show is going to be structured is questionable. If they give the four main events. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting the top three matches to get 20 minutes each, at least. Um, I'd like to see. Uh, Daniel Bryan vs. Sheamus get that same sort of treatment, but you know they've got another four matches to to put out there, so I'm not sure about that. Um, I'll have another video up soon, post WrestleMania, which will not be a WrestleMania review, although I might do a WrestleMania review depending on how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, this has been me. This has been my WrestleMania preview slash overview slash whatever you want, whatever you want to call it and I'm out peace